electric vehicle tires are different. And today in this video, we will discuss how these tire affects the EV performance and efficiency. Let's start with a simple question. Can you use a normal car tire on an electric vehicle? The answer is yes, if you are ready to sacrifice range and efficiency of your vehicle. Normal car tire used on electric vehicle increases the energy consumption, increases the noise and can affect the handling characteristics of vehicle. So, choosing an EV specific tire can optimize the performance and maximize the benefits of electric mobility. In this video, we will cover everything you need to know about EV tires in terms of rolling resistance and how it impacts the energy consumption, range and weight of electric vehicle. So without spending much time, let's start now. Let's begin with rolling resistance. Rolling resistance is a force that opposes the motion of vehicle's tire as it rolls along the road. EV tires have low rolling resistance compared to the normal car tires and this is because of three major reasons. Number one is the energy efficiency. Low rolling resistance helps to maximize the energy efficiency. As less energy is lost due to low rolling resistance tire, this allows electric vehicle to achieve a longer range on a single charge. Number three is the heat generation. Tires with low rolling resistance produces less heat. As less heat is produced, this will increase the tire life and reduces the tire wear. So what special is there in the EV tire that reduces its rolling resistance? The major reason is the tire design and tire construction. The way the tire is built, including the number and arrangement of layers, the material used and the design of belts and plies, all affects and increases the stiffness of tire. And the stiff tire have low rolling resistance and better load bearing capacity. Let's understand this with an example. Consider two tires rotating in anti-clockwise direction. The first tire is a normal tire and the second tire is an EV tire. This is the stress strain curve for the tire 1 and this is for the tire 2. As EV tires are stiffer, the stress strain curve loop for the EV tire is thinner compared to the normal tires. The area inside the loop gives the energy loss during loading and unloading of tire. By comparing these two curves, we can see the energy loss in the normal car tire is more as compared to the EV tire. Now consider the first tire. On a particular strain, we have two values of stress, sigma 11 and sigma 12. As sigma 11 is greater than sigma 12, the weight distribution of tire will shift towards the left direction. Let the shifted weight be delta x1. Now, for balancing this force, a W force is applied by the ground. This will create a counter torque which is given by m1 equals to delta x1 multiplied by w. This counter torque will apply the force on the tire in the forward direction. So the ground will apply a resisting force on the tire in the backward direction which is given by fr1. This resisting force is called the rolling resistance. So fr1 equals to m1 divided by rh where rh is the rolling radius. See, uh, if you are unable to understand all these equations or you are facing any challenge regarding the rolling radius or rolling resistance, I have made a separate video on that. So you can just check that from the I button or I have included that particular video in the description as well. So you can just go through it and you will uh, get a better understanding of rolling radius and rolling resistance both. But uh, I think that these equations are very simple for you. So uh, you will get it. Okay. Now uh, we got the equation which is fr1 equals to delta x1 multiplied by w divided by rh. Now for the second tire which is a stiffer tire as this is an EV tire, the weight distribution will be something like this because the difference between the sigma 21 and sigma 22 is less as compared to sigma 11 and sigma 12. This shows that delta x1 will be greater than delta x2. From the similar iterations we can get fr2 equals to delta x2 multiplied by w by rh. Okay, so we get the value for the rolling resistance of the second tire, which is an EV tire. As you can see that delta x1 is greater than delta x2, which shows the value of rolling resistance for the EV tire, which is fr2, will be less than the value of rolling resistance for the normal car tire, which is fr1. Also, you can see we are having a term which is delta x by rh. This term is called the coefficient of rolling resistance. As delta x1 is greater than delta x2, this shows that the coefficient of rolling resistance for an EV tire is less compared to the coefficient of rolling resistance for a normal car tire. Now let's check how this rolling resistance affects the range, energy and weight of vehicle. Let's consider two exactly same EV cars. One having a normal tire and other car is having an EV tire. I am assuming these values for the car. For example, the mass of 
of both of the EVs is 1500 kg. We have a gravitational uh, acceleration g which is 9.81 meter per second square. The coefficient of rolling resistance for the EV tire is 0 0.01 and the coefficient of rolling resistance for the normal tire is 0 0.015. So as the coefficient of rolling resistance for normal tire is greater than the EV tires, I have considered that in the example as well. I am also considering the drag force here. So the drag coefficient is CD which is given by 0 0.3. Here are some simple equations which I will be using for the calculation of energy consumption. If you are unable to understand any of this equation, you can just comment down and I will solve your query. Okay, so on putting the above values in this equation, we will get the energy consumed by the EV with the EV tire is 56058.75 kJ and the energy consumed by EV with the regular tires is 63416.25 kJ to travel the same distance of 100 km at the speed of 30 m per second. Okay, so this result suggests that the EV specific tires with a lower rolling resistance are more energy efficient. Now let's calculate the range of electric vehicle. Suppose the battery capacity is 60 kWh. The range of EV with a battery capacity of 60 kWh will be given by battery capacity divided by energy consumption per kilometer. So on putting all the values, we will get the range of EV with the normal tire, which is D1, which is equals to 340.6 kilometers, and the range of EV with the EV specific tire is D2, which is equals to 385.31 kilometer. Clearly, we get an additional 44 kilometers in an EV tires. So, the use of EV tires in your car will help you to increase the range of your electric vehicle. Now, suppose you want to achieve this additional 44 kilometers with the EV having a normal tires. So obviously you will need an extra battery for that. So the extra battery capacity required is given by 634.1625 into 44, which gives 27903.15 kJ, which is also equals to 7.75 kilowatt hour. So this is the extra battery capacity required if you want to achieve the 44 kilometer additional distance. Now let's assume that the energy density of the battery is 200 watt hour per kg. So the increase in weight due to this additional 7.75 kilowatt hour battery capacity, which is required for achieving the 44 kilometer distance is 38.75 kg. So you can see you are increasing around 40 kgs in your car. If you want to achieve this additional 44 kilometers with the normal car tire, hence EV tires not only help you in maximizing the energy efficiency, but they also help you in reducing the weight of your car for achieving the maximum range. So this is all about the comparison between the normal car tire and the EV tires in terms of rolling resistance. This much for this video. Thanks for watching. If you find the video useful, do like it, share it with your friends and colleagues. Also, if you want to check my blogs related to vehicle dynamics, you can check that on my website. In the further videos, we will be covering about the tire design and the tire construction. So stay tuned, keep learning, keep exploring.